Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now as PC gamers we all have one common enemy. No it's not the console gamer, it is in fact dust. And unfortunately my GTS 250 has succumbed to a bit of a dust bath recently and it's got to the point where it's affecting the gameplay temperatures so much that the card is reaching highs of 90 to 100 degrees. So today we're going to give it a bit of a clean up. Now this isn't the most exciting video in the world but I wanted to put out something that was a little bit relaxing perhaps to watch or to listen to if uh, my voice and relaxing goes together I don't know and um, I'm going away over the weekend for a few days so this will be the last video for about five or six days now so let's clean this old girl up see if it can improve the temperatures and I'll also talk about what else you can do to perhaps improve the performance of an older graphics card. So we're going to be entirely stripping down this GTS 250, starting with the heatsink itself. Now fortunately in this case the heatsink is held on with just four small screws. So a small screwdriver set like this one comprised of Phillips head screwdrivers will do the job just fine throughout this task. Once that's disconnected, it's important to remember to, of course, remove the fan header connection here to make manoeuvrability with the parts a little more convenient. Now, before we remove the thermal paste, I'm going to clean up some of the dust here with tissue and a bit of cloth to try and get this thing as clean as possible. Now when it comes to removing thermal paste, on some occasions you can just wipe it off if the paste is a little bit moist still. In this case, some of it came off with a cloth, but we're going to have to try and use a bit of rubbing alcohol here to remove some of the dry and crispy stuff. I usually just apply a little bit to a cotton swab and it just shifts right off just like that. It's also important to do the same thing with the board itself, removing the thermal paste from the actual graphics chip. Also, if your GPU is as dirty as mine, you may get a lot of built up dust around the chip itself. Now this will just simply blow off, um, or you can use a can of compressed air to blow the remaining dust away from the board. Although in this case, the dust itself is pretty loose and came off quite easily. I'm also going to remove the fan from the heat sink today to clean that individually. As you can see, it has got a little bit grimy over the past few months. Again, this can be a little bit fiddly, but in most cases, this simply involves removing three screws from the fan, taking it off. And if I show you here, just look at all the dirt and grime that has built up under this fan which is surely affecting the temperatures of this card in game. Although it looks like a bit of a grim job there is nothing quite as satisfying as cleaning up an old GPU and getting it working a lot better than it was before. The dust on this fan here can once again be removed with a microfiber cloth or if you have it some compressed air in a can which can be found in a lot of PC hardware stores or even online on places like Amazon for just a few pounds, dollars or euros. Now once that fan's all cleaned up it will be a little bit fiddly to reapply it but once you've lined it up like so just just replace those three screws and then you're good to go with reapplying the thermal paste to the card itself. Now of course you can use the same thermal paste that you would use on a processor, just use a little bit less of it as I'm showing you here and once that's done go ahead and reapply the heat sink, not forgetting to actually screw it back on of course. Once done it's also important to remember to plug that fan header back in, otherwise all this cleaning would have been pointless as your card will pretty much overheat immediately. With our card clean, it's time to jump back into the same games and see what sort of temperature decrease, if any, we see. So I jumped back into the two games I tested earlier today, which were Bioshock Infinite and Far Cry 2. In both cases, the maximum GPU temperatures in these specific games had dropped by roughly 5 to 10 degrees under load, which I think is a nice achievement considering all we did was change the thermal paste and dust the graphics card. If you have loads of dust in your system and all over your graphics card, then I expect you should be able to see more significant drops so it's definitely something worth doing. Now not only is it important to keep your graphics card clean for better airflow but it also gives us a better chance to be able to overclock the card itself. With a lower temperature to begin with that means we can push the card a little bit higher in programs like MSI Afterburner and get better performance out of it that way. 
If you're still using an older card like this one here, then it's also important to update your drivers, which of course can be found on either Nvidia's or AMD's site, depending on your preferred manufacturer. This ensures that you will have the best possible performance from your chosen graphics card. Now you can also choose to flash the BIOS of the graphics card if you wish. Now I wouldn't recommend this unless the manufacturer has said so in the past, perhaps there's a flaw with the original BIOS that needs addressing, or you just want to overclock it as much as you can without any limits but other than that there is no real reason to which is why I won't be doing that to this GTS 250 although over on Tech Power Up there is a VGA BIOS available to be flashed although if you guys would like to see that I will make a tutorial on that in the future. That being said our GTS 250 is now cleaned up running better than it ever has in the past and we should now be able to get a little more life out of this old GPU. Guys, thank you very much for watching. This video hasn't been the most exciting in the world, but like I said, I'm going away for a few days over the weekend. And if not anything else, I just wanted to talk to you guys before I went away as well. So I thought, why not combine it with a video that could perhaps be helpful? So as always, thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all when I get back.